what the hell is runtime go shit you probably already seen it somewhere or you don't or maybe you read in some kind of an article or some video well runtime go shit is something you're not going to use very often but it's super amazing if you know what you can do with it in this video i'm going to show you an real world use case on how i used runtime go Shed and what it actually does but before we continue guys if you're not yet subscribed to my youtube channel consider subscribing give me a thumbs up and leave some questions in the comments i also have a discord community with over 700 active people uh 24 7 if you have questions about calling or other languages all the links are down in the description of course uh, it's basically the black friday week i also have the full-time godev course which is for people uh, that are willing to learn more about golang building apis uh, microservices i also have uh, a complete blockchain from scratch in there uh, and i am basically planning by the end of the year to make uh, a distributed fault tolerant systems course in golang and the people that already have the full-time godev will have it for free but i will also sell it separately for the people that just want to have that right so check that out all links are in the description <coughs> so let's continue here so basically runtime go shed what it is first of all i need to explain uh what golang actually is going to do so let me open up um x draw here right so let's say you have a couple of functions right let's say this is a function here let me do uh go foo something like that right up here boom let's copy this and i'm gonna paste it a couple of times here all right just like this let's zoom in so basically let's say you have an application and you have uh, three functions which is basically foo in this case and you're gonna basically schedule them in another go routine uh, it's gonna look you're gonna perceive that all these functions are going to run at the same time but that's not true, right? So we have something that is called the Go Scheduler, and the scheduler is basically going to uh, schedule these three functions, right? And it's going to check uh, the best possible time to run that function. It's not going to be in parallel. It's going to be, it's going to give you the illusion that it's going to run at the same time. But the scheduler is going to check, hey, this foo function is going to have some IO blocking operation, or it's a time sleep, or Whatever it needs to do, whenever the, the, the Golang scheduler finds an opportunity that this function is basically blocking for some reason, it, or even if it's just a, a nanosecond, it's going to schedule this, right? And the same time, if this is going to block somewhere, I don't know, maybe you're doing some I.O. or a network call, whatever, it's going to schedule this, right? And it's going to schedule them so fast that, you, that it's basically going to give you the illusion that these functions are running at the same time. But it's just an optimization um, that the scheduler is doing to run all these functions as close to as the same time as possible, right? That's what Golang is doing with these Go routines. Of course, uh, in depth, it's going to be a little bit more complicated because you also have threads and it will yada, yada, yada. But hey, explaining complex problems in a very simple way is very hard, right? So uh, yes, that's the first thing uh, that you need to understand, right? So what is this thing? I um, uh, have this inbox here. This is basically some code from the Hollywood project, which is uh, an actor model framework, right? I have some videos about that. And um, what we're doing here is we have an actor, right? Let me actually draw this here, right? First, so you can actually see that it's going on. So we're gonna have an actor, which is basically going to call uh, a function, and it's gonna be sent. It's going to send messages to other actors, right? You have all these actors, all these processes, and they're gonna communicate with each other by sending messages, right? Very simple, boom, it's gonna send a message, right? And each time it's going to send a message, it's going to basically uh, run the inbox, which is basically the inbox of an actor, basically means each time you send a message, it's going to be received in the inbox, in the mailbox, and it's going to process all its messages in the inbox, right? And then handle them. That's what it's gonna do. So basically, let me quickly see. So you can see it right here. Each time we're gonna send, it's going to push the message into the ring buffer, and then it's going to schedule uh, the inbox, right? And it's very complex. You can check it out on GitHub, link in the description. And each time it's going to run, we're gonna have here a runtime go shed, 
right? So what GoChat is basically doing, it's like I said, like I mentioned before here, actually I should go back. Can I do this? Yes, I can. Each time, like I mentioned here, each time there is some kind of a blocking, if, if the scheduler notices some blocking sleeping operation where it finds the opportunity to schedule the next foo function here, your next go, your next function in the stack, um, it's going to schedule it. But let's say that this foo has just a for loop, right? It's just a for loop, which basically means there, is, there will be no opportunity. Uh, there will be no blocking operation. So there will be no opportunity for the scheduler to schedule another function in, right? This is very simplification that I'm, 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 I'm trying to explain it very simple, but the concept stays the same, right? Is there a way so we can notify the scheduler that there is a blocking up, that there is some kind of a, a moment, that there is some momentum to schedule something else? Well, that's actually what Runtime Gosha does, right? You're gonna tell like, listen, I'm doing some stuff here, Golang Scheduler, but I'm gonna call Runtime Gosha. So you have the opportunity to park me somewhere, to park, to park this function. Right? Hey, park me and let the rest find something else to schedule because I'm parked. I, I'm done. I'm sleeping for a while, so to say. Right? That's what Gauchet actually does. Right? If you see this here, let's, let's go, let's dive in. Uh, actually, uh, Gauchet yields the processor allowing other Go routines to run. It does not suspend the current Go routine, so execution resumes automatically, right? Yada, yada. You don't, the most important thing is allowing other Go routines to run, right? Okay, that's Go Shed, right? Go Foo is a for loop. It's going at the speed of light. Your processor, your CPU is burning. You call Go Shed. You're going to notify, yo, park me and let the other Go routine, the next you can find, the next best Go routine you can run, run it. Good. I hope you understand what Gauchet does. The question rather is, why the hell should we use that? Well, that's uh, something that basically not is, is, it's not being found so hard on the, uh, so uh, common on the internet. But I have a, the best explanation here. Right, so let's go back here. Um, I'm gonna delete these things, guys. I'm so sorry here for my uh, noobism. Um, so this is going to be an actor. Actually, let's call yeah an actor is fine. Uh, and this actor is going to let's copy this boom boom, and it's going to send a message right. It's going to send a message in a loop. Boom boom. Each time you call send, it's going to send a message. It's going to process right. So that's fine. Locally right. Locally, if you have local actors, which basically means all your actors live on the same machine. Right here, on this actually, why why copy paste Anthony? Copy paste your stuff. Right on the same machine. Uh, yes, just like this. Right on the same machine. I'm gonna send a message. Right, send a message. It's fine here. And it's gonna keep sending these things locally. That's all fine, because if you send a message on your same machine on the same process, on the same binary, you don't need to do any kind of serialization, right? If you, if you call a function in Golang and you have a structure, you don't need to serialize it because it's locally run. It's in the same binary, in the same process, right? That's fine. But the problem is that what happens, and this is very important to understand, what happens if we don't run these locally, right? What happens if this actor is on another network another to be honest anthony you need to make sure yes just like that <clears throat> if this is on another network right what needs to happen uh just like here i'm actually the worst excalibra uh, user ever been born on the planet <clears throat> this is going to be the payload if you think about that, if you're gonna send a message over the network, to be honest, let's do this. That's even better, right? Exactly, you need to serialize this payload, right? You need to serialize that. Proto buffers, uh, message pack, whatever, 
kind of binary representation you want to have, you need to serialize that. And serialization is an overhead, right? So this means, this is very important, guys, because this is going to, uh, yeah, this is very important to understand. Um, so each time we're going to send here, right? Each time we're going to run this, each time we send here, basically means that we're going to process all these messages, right? One by one. Because it's a ring buffer, it's a it's a, a queue system, right? All these messages are coming in the queue, and it's going to process these. It's going to pop a message, right? And it's going to send that over the network. This is bad. This is bad. If this was just a normal loop, and you're just gonna pop the message out of your queue and you're gonna send it over the network, it basically means if you have one million messages, you need to do exactly one million of serializations, one million of whatever, JSON serialization, proton buffers, it's, that's basically very, very performance critical and is a big overhead. So how can we fix that? Well, let's think about that. We have a for loop. We have a ring buffer, which is a queue, putting the message into its buffer, and then we're going to process them in a for loop. So how can we make it? How can we make it that we're going to send, instead of one message, we're going to send 250 messages or maybe 2,500 messages. Because if some somebody, if this actor is sending in a for loop, which basically means it's going, it's going to send as fast as, as your CPU can, there is no way we're going to basically pop more than one message out of the buffer because it's going so fast. But if we have runtime go chat, which basically means like, hey, Golang, instead of processing my, my for loop, park me, schedule something else, and then maybe it's back to me. So if we think about that, that means that we're going to have more messages into our buffer, right? That's why we have this uh, throughput, we're going to calculate the throughput, and then we're going to calculate the iterations. And if the iterations are faster than the throughput, we're going to schedule, we're going to park this uh, this inbox run function, allowing, allowing our buffer, our ring buffer to stack up messages, right? Because we are parked and, and th 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 this other guy is still sending like a madman. We allowing messages to be stacked into our buffer. And then when it's back to us and we need to send, we can actually send instead of this one payload over the network, we can basically send the whole fucking buffer, serialize them one time, send them over the network, and then we can handle it on the other side uh, of the network, right, on the new machine. Which basically means instead of serializing message by message, we're going to serialize 250 messages, maybe 2,000 messages at the same time, which is basically much more performant than just doing a single message each time. Locally, it doesn't matter, but over the network, where the serialization comes into play, very important to serialize once a batch of messages. And that's why I'm using runtime GoShed here. When we basically detect, right, when we detect that the sender is going ham, it's sending like a madman, we know that we have an opportunity to buffer the messages into our queue by using runtime GoShed. Then we can basically pop, right, which I'm going to need to refactor here. And we're going to pop them all, which allowing us to have multiple messages and then serialize them, send them over the network, right? Uh, that's because I never, I never used Runtime GoShed in whole my life, but this is one of the best examples I can give you why this could be handy, why it could be handy for you if you, because imagine that you're going to do a sleep, Right? Let's say, yeah, but Anthony, can we not just do something like, if you want to buffer up these messages, why don't we just do a sleep? But let's, let's, let's imagine that. Let's say you're going to sleep for one millisecond. That's already a one, a one millisecond latency. But Hollywood is sending 10 million messages in under one millisecond. Yeah, but then we sleep a nanosecond. But who is telling you that the nanosecond is good? Who is telling you that uh, a microsecond is good? Nobody knows. That's why we have this, and you can check the code, 
Uh, that's why we have this uh, scheduler throughput function. And then based on the iterations, we can calculate if we're going super fast, then we do a runtime go shed, right? So that's basically it. Um, let me know if you understand this in the comments. It's a very hard topic, guys. So don't uh, roast me here. It's very hard to explain. Um, there are a lot more mechanics coming to play. Uh, there is a lot more detail into this, but I'm trying to explain everything a little bit more a higher level perspective so you can understand. And once you understand the concepts, you can by yourself go in deeper and uh, uncover the real deal. Uh, so to say, right? So uh, I hope I hope this video uh, basically teaches you something. Uh, check out the codes, uh, subscribe to my channel, jump into my Discord. Thank you very much, and I'm looking forward to see you in the next video or live stream.